Hello, and thank you for joining us today. For the purposes of this webinar, I'd like to discuss some of the aspects of inventory management in Dynamics 365 Business Central and some of the tools that are available to help manage and keep our stock under control. I'm going to begin by reviewing the item card page in Business Central and in particular, I want to take a look at the reorder options that are available on the card. We'll then take a look at the requisition worksheet and how we can use this to calculate demand and transform those calculations into orders. And then finally, I'll quickly focus on the sales and inventory Azure AI forecasting extension and take a look at how machine learning in Business Central can really help us confidently forecast our stock requirements. So without further ado, let's firstly take a look at the item card. For the purposes of this webinar, I've got a demonstration company and I'm using the inventory management uh, role center so that I've got a lot of the inventory management tools at my fingertips. And I'm going to either search for, I'm going to actually select the option items uh, from my role center here. And uh, in my item list, uh, I'm going to select, uh, let's select the Rome guest chair. And there's two fast tabs which I want to focus on today. Uh, firstly, the replenishment fast tab and then the planning fast tab. So let's open up the replenishment fast tab first of all and zoom in on some of the fields. First of all, the replenishment system. So I've got four options as well as blank. Uh, purchase, production order, transfer and assembly. And this tells Business Central how to replenish the stock for this item. Um, so this one's set as purchase, which means um, if the stock falls below a certain level, then Business Central will suggest uh, creating a purchase order to replenish the stock. Um, if it's production order, then Business Central presumes it's a manufacturing item and it needs to be produced. Um, and so create a production order. Um, if it's set to transfer, then uh, it will transfer from another stock location and, and create a transfer order. And finally, if it's an assembly, then Business Central will assume that it will be assembled using other components. So this one's set as purchase. There are some other fields that come into play as well. Uh, the key one is the lead time calculation. So in here we can put a, a value, um, a period of time, in this case 14 days, um, which we expect it will take from the point of raising the purchase order and submitting it to the supplier, to the vendor, uh, to when we actually receive the stock. So in this case, 14 days. I've got some other things here, the purchase unit of measure. So uh, this is the, um, the type of unit of measure that we would normally purchase this item, this chair in, in this case, pieces. Uh, I can also put in a default vendor number. So this is who we would normally purchase the item from. This is just a default. We can change this uh, on the fly. And then the supplier, the vendor item number. Um, this is their, their number, how they number their stock, which is quite often different from our own. So this is a good reference point. So that's our replenishment tab. This works in conjunction with fields on the planning tab. So let's open the planning fast tab and have a look at some of these. First of all, we've got reordering policy. Again, we've got blank or four options. First of all, we've got fixed reorder quantity, maximum quantity, order or lot for lot. So let's take a look at each of those in turn. First of all, fixed reorder quantity. If it's set to that, this tells Business Central to look at uh, some other fields, two other fields, reorder point and reorder quantity. So first of all, Business Central, Central will check uh, the reorder point. Um, and if the stock falls below that amount, in this case 50, then it knows it's got to reorder, make a reorder. So it shouldn't let the stock fall below there. Um, and secondly, reorder quantity. So this is sort of the lot size. This is the um, the quantity that it would order re or normally reorder in, so in lots of 25. Um, so, for example, if I've got a sales demand for 20, um, it will reorder, um, create a purchase order in this case for 25 rather than the 20. So that's fixed reorder quantity. Uh, it will also take into account as well this uh, safety stock quantity. So uh, it might uh, trigger a purchase order when it falls below 50, but uh, we've got a lead time of 14 days, by which time it might fall a lot lower. So in order to try and meet our demand, there's a safety stock quantity. If it falls below 60, then we should be raising a purchase order. The second option, uh, reordering policy, is maximum quantity. And this one uses this maximum inventory field. 
Um, and what per, uh, Business Central will try and do is try and keep the stock level up to that value. And because of that, it's probably not the most often used reordering policy because you'll end up with your uh, wherever you hold your stock, whether it's a beer in the shelf or a stillage or whatever it might be, uh, you'll ha have it always full to capacity. Um, the next one is order. And this is a like to like one to one relationship with your demand. So every time there's a sales demand, a sales order is created on the system. Business Central will try and restock with a purchase order. So a like to like match. Finally, there's lot for lot and the lot for lot will um, work in conjunction with this lot accumulation period and it will try and consolidate all the demand into one purchase order. So this is set for, to one month, but it might be one week, two weeks or whatever it might be. Um, and it will look at all the demand for that period and consolidate it into one order. So these are all the sort of the key fields here. However, there are two other fields here which are key, the order modifiers, minimum order quantity and maximum order quantity. So once Business Central has worked out what the uh, um, replenishment amount should be, it will then check these order modifiers. And the minimum order quantity says that I can't raise an order, for example, for below 25 units, uh, 25 pieces in this example. Um, and similarly, maximum order quantity is a ceiling. Um, if it's got a value in here, then it said you can't raise an order for above this ceiling. So these two order modifiers are also taken into account. So these are the key fields for replenishment and reordering on our business card. Um, however, so having said all of that, um, it's also uh, worth noting that um, if you are also using stock keeping units, then these fields also, some of these fields also exist on the stock keeping unit and will override these item settings. So bear that in mind as well. It's also worth mentioning that there is a lot of best practice information available out there on the web uh, that can be used to help make a decision on how best to uh, set up your reordering policies. This includes a document by Microsoft, which can be found at docs.microsoft.com, which explains how to use the item ABC classification. This classification divides items into one uh, of three different classes, A, B or C, depending on their value and volume relative to total stock. So the effort and money can potentially be saved by applying looser controls to items of low value volume while keeping much tighter controls over items of high value volume. I haven't got time here to go into details here, but uh, by using the various reordering policies available, um, tighter reordering controls can be had for classified A items by using the order like for like reordering option, while the classified C items can be assigned uh, looser controls uh, re reordering policies such as the fixed reorder quantity or the maximum quantity reordering policy. OK, so now um, we have our items set up and have defined the reordering policies. Uh, when the inventory starts running low or when the demand dictates, we'll need to start placing orders. We, of course, can create purchase orders manually, but Business Central includes tools that make inventory management and maintaining stock levels much more efficient. And these can be found in the requisition worksheet, for example. So let me go back to my role center. And uh, I'm going to either search for or I've got an option on my role center for requisition worksheet. So I'm going to select that. Um, I can have multiple worksheets. I can create new ones by new. In my demonstration company, I've only got the one, so I'll select that and edit worksheet. Now I can populate this worksheet manually, um, and the requisition worksheet provides information about what items need to be reordered using the fields set up on the item card um, of the two fast tabs we just looked at, replenishment and planning fast tabs. So let's do one manually first of all. Uh, select a type item. I'll select my item. Let's select the same one we've just been looking at. So um, scroll down and my uh, Rome guest chair. And I want to order a quantity of, let's say, 10. Um, I've got information down the side here. I can see what I've just looked at before. Replenishment system is purchase. I've got a vendor uh, number of 2000. So this is going to suggest uh, creating a purchase order in a minute for my default vendor. Um, if this was set as um, um, a replenishment item of um, production order, 
then I would also have a routing number and a production bond number showing here as well. But we know it is purchase here. And then I want to tell the system what I want to do here. So I'm going to say create a new purchase order for these 10 pieces. And then I'm just going to go to process and carry out action message. And I've got an option to print my orders. I won't bother with that at the moment. Click OK. And it takes this requisition worksheet line and generates purchase order. So I can go to my purchase orders now and I can go and find that one and I can release it, email it to the supplier, whatever my processing um, would normally be. Having said all this, um, the worksheet can be used far more efficiently by using the automated batch job. Uh, which will run and calculate the replenishment plans for all items and stock keeping units which have been set up with a replenishment system of either purchase or transfer. Um, so let's try that then. So I can go to test and I can go to calculate plan. I've got filter options here. Uh, I'm just going to leave the date starting and end date as they are. I'm not going to put a number in, so it will go and look at all my stock and look at the uh, replenishment um, options that we've just looked at and calculate what requirements are needed. So let's click OK. Should run through fairly quickly. And what it's done, let's have a look. So it suggested uh, three new purchase orders. Um, for three items and one cancel here. So it's looked at my purchase order that I've just raised manually. Um, it says we don't need this. We're going to consolidate it onto one purchase order for um, the other demand that's on the system. So it's going to cancel my order that I've just manually made and create a new one to consolidate the orders. Um, I can change my action mes messages uh, if I want to. So I can change a quantity or reschedule, um, but I'm going to leave it as it is. So I'm going to now click process and carry out action message. Uh, okay, again, I can print my orders if I want to and click OK. And away it goes. It's created my new purchase orders. I'm going to have a look at those. Uh, I won't bother doing that now uh, because of time. So the requisition is a worksheet is a really useful tool for managing my um, posting of items. OK, finally, I just have time to provide an overview of the sales and inventory forecast extension. As we've already seen when discussing reorder policies, inventory management is very much a balancing act between having the ability to provide good customer service while at the same time effectively managing costs. But we don't want to get into a situation where we run out of stock and are thus unable to honour our sales and service commitments. So striking the right balance can be helped by using the tools in Business Central, uh, including the sales and inventory forecast extension for Business Central, which can predict potential sales using historical data and help provide a clearer overview for when inventory may run low. This is a machine learning tool and the extension should already be installed and the connection to the Azure AI configured in your Business Central application. If it isn't, it's quite a simple process to actually install. So if I search for um, extension management, and uh, open that up. I can check whether it's uh, in my installed extensions. So uh, I've actually got it on my demo system, sales and inventory forecast. If it isn't, it's quite easy to load. I can go to manage and extension mar marketplace and search for it. And then when I found it, I can upload the extension. So once it's installed, I can go to sales and inventory forecast setup. And in this setup, uh, we've got a few parameters that we can um, use. So the first two key ones is period type and horizon. The period type, that's uh, how we're going to um, build our forecast. So we've got an option of day, week, month, quarter or year. I've set it to quarter. And the horizon, how many periods into the future are we going to do our forecast and prediction for sales forecasting and inventory uh, forecasting four. So I've got this set up as six. So with these two fields, we can uh, work out how granular the forecast is going to be. Um, next, uh, we have the variance. So uh, this is used to control the plus or minus deviance in the areas. Um, and then we have uh, these two fields here, API URL and the API key. Um, the URL on the key um, are the links to the Azure API machine learning instant, instance. Again, if you haven't got these, then it's quite easy to go to actions, open the Azure AI, AI gallery and follow the instructions to get the URL and the key. 
Um, then we have uh, the historical periods. So how, how far back is the forecast uh, going to go and look to try and make the predictions? In this case, we've got 36 periods set. Uh, so to look at all the item ledger, ledger entries with the type sales um, back that far. And lastly, the time series model, which are statistical method for forecasting. Uh, there's several options here we can select. So I've just click the first one there. Once we've got this set up, we have two options. We can either go to new and update the forecast manually, or we can set up a scheduled forecasting and set up a job queue to run this automatically, um, either sort of daily, weekly, however you want to do. Um, just before this webinar, I ran it manually just to save a little bit of time because it takes a bit of time to run through um, all the historical data and make predictions for you. So once it's run, we can go um, back to our items. And in our item list, uh, let's go back to our Rome guest chair again, open this up. And once it's open on the right hand side on our fact boxes, we should have down the bottom here, our forecast. Now, uh, the Rome guest chair um, is fairly straightforward forecast here. We can see our six periods that we set up for the forecast. Um, and it's just saying we've got a, a stock quantity of 10 over each period. So not very exciting this one, but it could show stock outs um, for any one of those periods, showing me that I should need to uh, reorder stock. And I can do that uh, directly from here by forecast and uh, create purchase order. Um, so that's our sales and inventory forecast um, option in Business Central. So in this webinar, I've ha had a look at the key inventory management fields found on the replenishment and planning fast tabs uh, on the item records. Uh, and we've seen how they can be used in the system when using the replenishment worksheet. I've then taken a look at the sales and forecast extension to see how this can be used to predict when stockouts are likely to occur and to be able to plan ahead and ensure that there is enough inventory in stock at critical times. Thank you very much for sparing the time to join this webinar today. If you'd like to have more information on this or anything else to do with Dynamics 365 Business Central, please contact Tiski.